somehow for a child of 14 to a maid. As you lifted it to the light, I could feel the growing desire coming through you in flashes to smash it, shatter that fragile beauty, the pleasure it gave me. It's actually a friend of mine describing his son, showing him the first beautiful thing he made and at the same time feeling uh, something else happening. Um, I'll read one more poem from George Star, since that's the book they have there. It's too expensive to buy, but I suppose I should read a couple of poems from it just in case. Um, this is called Island, uh, and it's, uh, it's a dreamlike memory of someone's life. The other graph, which is mine, but it's just, uh, it's there at the beginning. The first breath, she says, shall take you back to childhood. And the second breath? Always to come back to this deep place where someone is breathing you, gills of white light, rose bush on water. Listen. The wind is sharpening its knives. Someone is turning the pages of the sea. Kicking, swim to the window where two statues embrace in falling snow. She, who holds the knife in her arms, looks down at you smiling. This is your father, home on furlough. Great white bell of memory melting. Out of the cloud factory come the women in their skirts of evergreen, gathering from the foaming shore, Lithuania's electric honey, amber of invisible bees. All night the dark shapes circle overhead, blankly black and shining, shining. Every day is an alibi, they say. Even nothing has a mother. A quick silver stick strikes the blind sky, and someone cries, the red rooster is loose. Loved hands lift you to a giant horse on ice. Here is the gold napkin ring engraved with your birth date and a stranger's name. The shipwrecked wind sea of shattered glass fiery islands of debris, the black motorcycle spinning in space. Here is blood and milk, alluvial murmurs of a move, the single white stone no one atones for. Who rescues you? A boy with small ears whose name contains the mother of waters, Watch her over milk cans in a kosher dairy. She wraps you in her shawl of gray roses, looks death in the eye, and laughs. I've seen a bigger dwarf. How old is the wind? Does the salt milk her weep for the sea? Ah, little one, let the sky right itself. Close your eyes. Blow the candle out. Now breathe deeply. After me. Just two more, I think. Uh, I'm a failed fiction writer, so I uh, I discovered that I could I could write monologues, but I couldn't write short stories. I the middle I was great at beginnings and endings, but the middle is, is what fiction is all about, and I I was helpless. <laughs> So when I was 35, I discovered my whole life I'd been trying to write poetry and didn't know it. It was an extraordinary embarrassment. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, not that I succeeded, but I, uh, and this is one. There were very moving poems about uh, the Navy. I, I, I avoided the service during the Vietnam years. But, but I didn't avoid the horrors of Vietnam, and, and they kept uh, surfacing Six, I, I was taking a, a bus ride somewhere, and there was a man sitting beside me who started talking in a very angry way about the war, and the war was Vietnam, and of course that was over 12, 12 years 
before, but he was still caught in it, and he was going home to try to make amends with his wife. But the more he talked, the more I realized he was probably going home to kill her. That's the, that, was the, that was his anger. And when I got out to my destination, uh, for the next couple of days, I listened to hear whether in Chicopee Falls there had been a murder. It hadn't been, so who knows what happened. But, and then, uh, this tells you something about the urgency of now. About eight years later, I wrote the poem. So it's, uh, uh, it's uh, and it's sort of that voice. It's the admirable, uh, you have to forgive me, but uh, it's called Ghost Warrior. Anytime I walk into a place like this, I know I'm on the wrong side of the moon. Eyes like lasers burning through me. That spooky light off badly to TV. I switch to auto, whip around. There's smoke and whispers and that little click as your assholes close. No, I don't want medals, but I paid my dues. Two years in country, I never wasted anyone. I didn't think it was unfriendly. Sometimes there are flashes, flat, lightning, my buddy sucking mud, and everywhere smell of a barbecue in hell. My balls are brass, my teeth freeze to ice cubes when I see that candy ass second Louis, old golden heel, standing blue eyed under fire. Piece of metal whistles through his skull. He's history. And those others, my shadow boxing brothers in arms rolling down waxed halls, wall to wall, and treetop to tall in their shiny Everest wheelchairs, ghost warriors. So when the doctors put the fear in my old lady and the kid, I traded frag grenades, M16, some ammo, a bazooka, for this rebuilt Harley Silver Shadow with suicide shift on the left on account of the wires in my hands, my knees. When it's cold, they burn my ass. Then I wrote her a letter saying, chill out, baby, I love you to death. After the last lockup, I dreamed a red moon, black brass, two pale oxen in a bill, a voice said, Vincent, be vigilant, stay out of the sun. The night is a huge mirror you must look at. I woke up and stared at my broken hands, bags of old peanut shells, twisted sisters, and thought, what the fuck is my life anyway? Next morning, I'm AWOL, a shadow flying, Freaking bright light, 82nd Battalion's albino crow, rocking wings, getting the monkey high, gliding across the black lake of the parking lot in my Ray-Ban shades, purple dyed snakeskin boots, sure to wild Hawaiian flowers, I'm evil, an oil slick on asphalt. There's a shimmer in the air, and for a crazy second, I'm out there, hanging in the glare, almost invisible. Then I'm back in a black zipper sack, gagging on a dog tag as I scream, the living nightmare. What am I? Dead meat, the body count missed, point on a ghost patrol. Crack open my skull, I tell the VA, that you'll find someone fucked with the circuitry. Gray sponges soaking up dirty pictures, lies. Fix me, I say. I'm yours, all yours. A few jolts from the blue bowl. Mr. Spruin dies just fine. A genuine made of shade, government issue, killing machine. Except for dreams, bad dreams. <laughs>